Alrighty, we are going to go over section 9.2. We're going to go over um, just the part for confidence intervals and then in class you will go over the um, hypothesis test. So we're going to move on to inferences about two proportions. So this is the case when we want to compare two groups. So maybe we're interested in whether males and females uh, voted at the same rate in the last election. So we have one variable, whether or not uh, they voted, and then two groups we want to compare, males and females. And since um, voting is a categorical variable, yes or no, then the uh, proper parameter would be the proportion. So we're going to develop methods to compare uh, two proportions. And so there's a bit of notation, although it's not terribly hard because we're used to some of it. We just denote um, the two different groups by subscripts of 1 and 0. So you should have gotten this handout in class or I sent it on an email because this isn't included in your course packet anymore. Um, but the notation we're going to use, um, we're going to use P as the parameter like we've been doing, but we just need the subscript with 1 or 2 or sometimes we subscript with the letter that um, represents the group. So if we wanted to compare males and females, we might subscript with F and then M. And so uh, you should be used to this notation. We just have it now for two groups. We have the number of successes um, for both groups and the sample size. That's how we calculate the proportion. So we can get the pro sample proportion for each group by just taking x1 divided by n1 or x2 divided by n2. And then q hat 1 and q hat 2 is just 1 minus uh, p hat 1 and p hat 2. Um, that's a typo. I'll have to fix that. But uh, anyhow, yeah, that's how you get q hat 1 or q hat 2. You just take the sample proportion and subtract it. Okay, so we want to develop, a, and this, this right here is going to be used for hypothesis testing, so we don't need to go over that today. Uh, we're going to develop a confidence interval for looking at the differences between two groups. And any confidence interval has a point estimate and a margin of error. And so the margin of error is calculated by um, taking your value for z. Um, this was given to you in the table in chapter 7, comes just from the normal distribution. And then you multiply that times the square root of this formula right here. And the point estimate for a confidence interval is just the uh, difference between the two sample proportions. So we're calculating a confidence interval for the difference between two proportions. And so if you wanted just one formula for a confidence interval, here it is. You take the difference between two sample proportions plus or minus your value for z. So for a 95% confidence interval, if you look back to chapter 7, that would be 1.96. And then you multiply it times this formula right here. There's also a calculator function that does it as well. I will show you that when we go over an example. Okay, so the first thing when I do these types of problems is I um, write down all the information. Uh, so here's a simple random sample of front seat occupants involved in car crashes. And so we have um, two groups. We have uh, a group that was wearing a seatbelt and a group that wasn't. So this is the group that was not. So 31 out of the 2,823 were killed for the group that was not. And then the group that was wearing a seatbelt, um, we have 16 that were killed. We want to construct a 95% confidence interval for the difference between the uh, fatality rates. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to um, summarize all this information and I want to use this formula right here. So I need the sample proportion from group 1. We'll call that the occupants that were not wearing the seatbelts. And the sample proportion from group 2. That's the occupants that were wearing a seatbelt. All right, so first I want to calculate p hat 1. That's the sample proportion for 
what we're calling group one, which is the not wearing seatbelt. So I have uh, 31 divided by two, uh, 2823. And so that's going to be 0 0.011. So Q hat one, just one minus that, so one minus 0 0.011. So that's equal to 0.989. And then p hat 2, that's going to be the proportion from the second group. So 16 out of the 765. So that's going to be equal to 0 0.002. And so q hat 2 is equal to um, 1 minus 0 0.002 and that's 0 0.998. Okay, so just by looking at the um, statistics it does look like occupants are more likely to drive um, but of course these are point estimates so we want the margin of error and we want to create a confidence interval. And so I have all of this information now, Z for 95 remember is uh, 1.96 for a 95 percent confidence interval and so I can calculate I can use that formula to calculate the confidence interval and so I'm going to take P1 hat so 0 0.011 minus P2 hat which was 0 0.002 plus or minus 1.96 times the square root of p hat 1 times q hat 1 divided by n1 so that's 2823 plus the same thing for the second group so 0 0.002 times 0.998 divided by N2, which is 7765. Okay, I usually calculate this by, um, I usually calculate this by first doing the point estimate, so just taking this difference, and so that's going to be 0 0.009, and then I do plus or minus, and then I'll calculate the margin of error. So I'll calculate this chunk right there. And so the margin of error was 0 0.004. And so every confidence interval has a lower bound. So if you take 0 0.009 minus 0 0.004, you get 0 0.005. And then the uh, you add the two, so 0 0.013. Okay, so there's the confidence interval. Let me show you how to do it on a calculator. So here's the TI calculator. I want to go to STAT and then I go over to TEST and then I'm doing a two prop Z interval. So it's not this one because that's the test. We want the confidence interval. So I actually go all the way down to uh, letter B which is right here, 2 prop Z interval. I'm going to hit enter. And now I just have to enter all this information. X1 is the number of accidents for the first group, which was 31. N1 is the sample size, so I have 2, 8, 2, 3. X2 is the number in the second group, so that was 16. N2 is the sample size for the second group, so 7765. Then I have a confidence level of 95, that's what I want. And then I just go to calculate and hit enter. Okay, so I get a confidence interval. Um, that's about the same as we got, a little bit of rounding error, but the top number is the confidence interval. And it shows the two sample proportions, but we're mostly interested in this number right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and interpret it. Now, that's the hardest part of this, um, is interpreting it because this is a confidence interval 
for the difference. Okay, so uh, I'm going to write that down for a difference. And so these numbers can be negative or positive. I need to realize what order I subtracted in. I took the um, the no seat belts minus the seat belts, right? And because this is positive, that means you're more likely to get in, to die in the accident if you're not wearing a seat belt because this number is larger than that, making these two numbers positive. And so this confidence interval tells us how much more likely someone is to die in a car accident if they're not wearing a seat belt. Okay, so let's go ahead and interpret that. We say we are 95% confident that you are between, I'm just going to make these percentages, it's a slightly easier, 0.5% and 1.3% more likely to die, it's kind of a morbid example, to die um, in a car accident. If you don't wear a seat belt. Remember, it's the confidence interval for the difference, so it's comparing the death rate for people that were not wearing seatbelts with the death rate for people that were. Because these two numbers are positive, and we took the not people, not seatbelt people minus the seatbelt people, these are positive, so this tells us how much more likely uh, you are to die if you wear a seatbelt.